Hello, I'm Brenda Martin with Inside Huntsville and welcome to our show. The purpose is to give you, our viewing audience, an opportunity to learn more about the services available through our many Huntsville City Departments. We again have Tommy Brown, Director of Parking and Public Transit. Welcome, Tommy. Thanks, Brenda. Glad to be here. You're responsible for two areas, park, public transit and parking. Now, last week we talked about public transit and the various services provided uh, to our many customers. Today you're going to give us an overview of the parking division. What are the basic functions of the parking department? Well, first of all, Brenda, we, we were organized to provide downtown parking primarily for the city of Huntsville. That was the origin of the parking department. We're responsible for the parking garages, the parking lots, and, and making downtown accessible to the, uh, to the uh, businesses and customers that come into the downtown area. We've evolved from that uh, over the years. We're responsible now for uh, event parking for VBC events, which which most of your viewers will, will have attended and, and interacted with our folks there. Um, we're also responsible for parking enforcement. We enforce the downtown parking in addition to downtown parking enforcement. We enforce citywide parking for handicap and fire lane violations. So that's the basic functions of mm -hmm. the department. Now, where exactly are the parking lots um, and, and located? Okay, we have five parking garages. I'll start off with the parking garages. We have five parking garages located in the downtown area. Um, everyone's familiar with the Civic Center garage that's across the street from the Civic Center on Monroe. It, it has about 1,100 spaces. <laughs> Primarily used for Civic Center events, we, we have uh, parking for the Summit Building and Huntsville mm -hmm. Utilities, YMCA and uh, other, other users in that garage. The Municipal Garage, which is across from City Hall, primarily supports the courthouse, municipal employees, um, people who are coming to serve on juries, that sort of thing uh, is used in that parking garage and it's about 600 spaces. Just up the street, we've got um, what was originally the Colonial Bank Garage there at the corner of Fountain Circle and um, Williams Avenue. That's about 500 spaces. It serves the, the current building that's uh, situated there. It serves the art museum, the Splash Park, some of the downtown uh, activities that go on in, the, in that area. Clinton Avenue Garage, about 500 spaces is a general parking garage for the downtown area. And then our newest garage is the uh, Twickenham Square Garage that serves the Publix, uh, the hotel, the apartment buildings, and the new retail that's going to be coming into that area. So how many parking spaces will be in, in that area? Um, that garage has about 900 spaces total, and so that will serve those needs well. A question that you're probably asked often, um, is there, do we have enough parking spaces downtown? <laughs> well, we have enough parking, we have plenty of parking in the downtown area. We often get the comment back that, that there's nowhere to park. Uh, and that's, um, that's a little bit frustrating to us in a, okay. in a fashion. There's plenty of spaces. The, the problem is, is that uh, I like, and you probably like, and, to the, be close. and the general public <laughs> likes to be right up front and, and right, in, right, right in front of where they want to go. So that's, that's what we, uh, that's what we hear, hear a little bit. Um, we have plenty of parking. Uh, a lot of it is in garages and people will park in the garages generally after the own street <laughs> parking fills up. So um, it, it's a, as downtown grows and as people come downtown more, they get more used to the parking that's available. We're gonna see more people using the garages and that's already happening. Okay, on street parking, Talk to me about that. Um, we provide on-street parking as well. That uh, consists of two different types of parking. One would be metered parking. Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have about 400 metered spaces in the city of Huntsville. Um, and then we have other on-street parking that's just one hour regulated parking where you can pull in, run into the courthouse, take care of your business, come back out, uh, that kind of thing. So we've got a mix of those sorts of, of, uh, of uh, parking spaces trying to make it as convenient for the general public as we can to come downtown and do business. What's the, um, the function, if you will, of the parking meters? Well, I get, I get that a lot. The park, parking meters are, love to be hated, and, uh, <laughs> but they have a very valuable function mm -hmm. uh, in the downtown area, and, and a lot of times people don't realize uh, 
They're not to generate revenue. They're not, uh, they're not to uh, do anything of that nature, not to generate tickets that we can write. Um, they're to generate turnover in the prime spaces in downtown. If we don't have meters there controlling those spaces by time, then we end up with uh, downtown employees that are there all day and those, those sorts of things taking up those prime spaces. Sure. So that makes it harder for the businesses to effectively park their clients that want to run in for a sure. few minutes and, and run out. So parking meters have a very valuable function not to collect money, not to not to create tickets, but to create turnover so that create people... Create turnover. Yeah, yes, we want yes. cars coming in, doing their business, going out. Mm -hmm. We don't want people coming in, parking there all day. Staying all day. And, yeah. and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's that's what the garages are for, and we have special rates, special programs for all day parking. So the idea with the on-street parking is to generate turnover so that we can make it as convenient as we can for the businesses in the downtown area. There's a lot of development going on downtown, of course. Yeah, what do you think the role of parking is as it relates to that? Well, parking is a, is a critical factor in any downtown's growth uh, uh, potential, um, particularly so in downtown Huntsville. As, as people that are familiar with Huntsville know, the square developed around the courthouse. There was very limited parking um, in, those, in those buildings that were have been here 100, 200 years. Mm -hmm. um, so parking was not a big, a big issue. So we're, we're lacking uh, parking in the downtown area. That's where our division comes in. We look at parking as just like a, a, an additional utility. You have water, you have sewer, uh, you have roads. Those are critical for development. And the downtown parking is critical for, de for development. And the garage type parking is where we see this going. Joint developments that makes the uh, best utilization of the land that we have available in town downtown. There's just not a lot of it left. And so our goal is to is to get the parking in the garages, do joint develops, developments where we can mm -hmm. uh, with garage parking, and that way we make the best use of the land in the downtown area. Tommy, you've been here uh, or with the city some 30 plus years, sure. uh, so you've seen a lot. Um, what improvements do you see uh, for the future of downtown? Well, some of the things that we're doing on the parking side to improve downtown, we've just recently uh, uh, instituted uh, where we can accept credit cards at, at our public garages. Um, so now the, uh, you know, if you're under 30 uh, uh, or maybe even under 40, you don't carry cash. So that makes it much more sure. convenient for our, uh, for our folks parking in the garages coming downtown. Um, some of the other things that we're looking at um, includes uh, on-street uh, meters with credit card capability really? as a possibility. That's uh, one of the things that we'd like to do. We'd like to uh, accept credit cards for Civic Center events, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of technology and parking that uh, would, be, would be appropriate for Huntsville, some that wouldn't. One of the things that I, I think is, is, is really doable and soon is pay by phone technology where when you pull into a parking space with a meter, you can use a phone app, you can pull up the phone app, you can put in the amount of time you want, it will charge that amount of time to your credit card. You go on to your meeting, if you stay past your allotted time, hmm. it gives you a, a, a ring and says you need to put more money on your meter so you don't have to worry about rushing back out, you don't have to worry about quarters and that kind of thing. So. Those are the kind of technologies that we're looking at to, to make the parking experience in downtown uh, more convenient for our customers. How soon do you think something like that, we could see something like that? We're here. having meetings with companies providing that technology this month, late no middle and late this month. So, um, you know, and, and some of the technology is, is uh, expensive, so you have to weigh the cost of the technology versus the uh, amount of use you're going to have to generate the money back. But um, I think some of those things are going to happen and, and it's going to be, uh, you know, probably within the next year or so. The money that's generated um, through our parking, where does that go back into? Well, we have a, a, a parking fund that pays our budget. Parking, uh, this will be interesting to your viewers, I think. Parking division pays its own way. I mean, the money that we generate from monthly parkers, yes. uh, from metered parking, uh, and that sort of thing goes back into the parking revenue fund, and it pays the way uh, of the parking division for our operations. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, annually, we may return a few hundred thousand dollars back to the general fund. But 
um, we generate enough revenue to, to pay your uh, own to way. Pay our own way. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're proud Wonderful. of that. Wonderful. Now, um, one of the uh, areas that you're responsible for is the parking at the VBD, VBC. Right. That's huge. Right. Um, explain how that works. Well, there's several uh, entities that provide parking that support VBC events. Ours is the largest. We have the Civic Center garage, the VBC garage that's across from the Civic Center. It has 1,100 spaces, as I said earlier. We've got the old Metagoal lot we call Lot V. It has about 500 spaces. It, it's very convenient to the North Hall. Um, we have Lot K, which is the gravel lot across the street from uh, the old Metagoal lot. So those are all the primary lots, and, and it's about 2,000 spaces that primarily serve the Civic Center. Those are city-operated lots. Those are our folks um, that, that collect fees there for parking and run those lots. Then you've got the South Hall lot and the North Hall lot of the Civic Center, which is Civic Center owned and operated. We all charge $5. And then, actually, without the Boy Scouts and some of the privately run lots on the periphery, yes. um, they provide a, a needed resource as well because that opens up other parking. And so... Uh, those are the three entities basically that provide it, but we, we have by far the, the majority of it and um, um, we do our best to make it a convenient uh, process for our customers. Well, what are some of the, your challenges in uh, maintaining uh, or providing the parking? Well, as it relates to uh, uh, the VBC, the VBC yes. event, here's the issue we have, Brenda. You know, and, and I know, when we go to an event, we leave 15 minutes before it starts or 30 minutes before it starts to get there 10 minutes before it starts. Well, so does everybody else. Somebody, okay. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, and I understand that, but it creates significant traffic. Uh, congestion, yes. and then we've got, we open as many entrances into our garages as uh, as possible for big events, but it still slows down when people come in, we have to make change and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's really our biggest challenge is getting people in. And then of course, when an event's over, it's a, a, a little easier, but it's still challenging to get people out. Um, you know, it, like a hockey game or a football game or something like that, the bell rings and it's over and everybody leaves. So, right. <laughs> so we have to direct, we do a lot of traffic directing. We use our uh, parking enforcement officers uh, along with cooperation from HPD is excellent. And we work uh, together to get people in and out as quickly as we can. But I know it's frustrating to the public sometimes when you have to wait in line. Another thing that, that really slows us down is that people often don't have change. It's $5 yes. to park. Yes. You know, it, it would be ideal if people could just hand us $5 and, <laughs> and drive on. Uh, sometimes we get $100 bills and oh uh, change and, you know, I got to look through my uh, purse or my little, uh, my little coin holders to find enough money. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it's a little bit frustrating, but we, we do our best to, to make it as convenient as we can. Tell me a little bit more about uh, parking enforcement in terms of, of your department and, and, and what you're responsible for. Well, we have two primary uh, activities that we do under the parking enforcement. Let me first say this. We, our department is in the parking enforcement uh, business for, I think, a, a, a pretty smart reason. Um, HPD uh, did parking enforcement uh, way Years back ago. in the day. Oh, okay. And and mm -hmm. police departments in other cities do parking enforcement in a lot of cases, but we felt like it was important to free up those police officers for higher level policing yes. functions. Yes. Um, and so our officers um, primarily concentrate on parking. Now, HPD officers can and will and do right parking tickets mm -hmm. um, if necessary. That's just not a primary function of theirs. We'd rather them be out um, looking for bad guys and, and that kind of thing. Um, so primary parking function enforcement falls on us. Two, two parts, downtown where we patrol the downtown for parking meter violations, time violations on, uh, on uh, uh, the hourly parking, that sort of thing. Um, we have four officers that provide that that service, and and I would like to say this too. Their their goal is uh, is to to be ambassadors for the city. We our, our guys we carry lockout kits. We open doors for people. We carry jumper cables. We jump off cars. We carry fire extinguishers. Wonderful. So wow. our our 
our uh, men and women out there doing parking enforcement are out there to provide service direct in traffic. That's yes. big. If okay. somebody if somebody has to block traffic to unload something in the downtown area, our guys uh, do the do the traffic directing. So, so they're not out there just giving tickets. They're not out there with binoculars down the street washing <laughs> your car to give you a ticket. <laughs> okay. That's that's not what we do. Um, but but we do we do enforce the traffic regulations and we have to do that. It's critical for uh, effective parking downtown. If we didn't enforce it, people would park in the prime spaces all day, all and, day long. And, and downtown sure. would, would would suffer for it. Um, we also have uh, parking enforcement citywide, and by that we mm -hmm. enforce the handicap parking. It, it, a big part of what our department does is, is supporting the handicapped community by enforcing that parking, making sure those spaces are available for people that need them. Um, the mayor has a commission on accessibility, uh, which I'm a member. Uh, Brian Dotson from Phoenix Industries is the president of that uh, group. And that group helps us to formulate parking policies for disabled folks and, and monitors our efforts, making sure that we're taking care of the things that we need to take care of there. So that's critical. Um, we've got eight officers that do citywide enforcement. We go to all the public places, the uh, shopping malls, the grocery stores, that kind of thing. And uh, we write parking tickets to people who abuse handicapped parking. Um, a secondary thing that we do on a citywide basis is fire lane ordinances. Several years ago, the, the uh, city council enacted a fire lane ordinance that restricts parking in a certain area in front of businesses. Uh, they have the red lines and that yes. sort of thing mm -hmm. so that people can't park in front of the, directly in front of these businesses and, and block uh, access to emergency vehicles, fire trucks, HMC, police officers, that kind of thing that need emergency access. So we enforce that citywide as well. And uh, so that's uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, basically a 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. effort and uh, it's a it's a big job because it's a it's a spread out city in a lot of area. To, now how many um, employees do you have doing that? We have nine officers that do the citywide. We okay. have three that do the downtown parking specifically mm -hmm. and then we have a couple of part-timers that fill in when when we need help mm -hmm. and we can we can redirect forces we can you know if we've got a big event we might bring in uh, several of the uh, citywide folks to direct traffic or help pedestrians cross the street in front of the mm -hmm. Civic Center. So we, we, we're we flexible with how we use our officers trying to get the, uh, you know, the best bang for the buck for the folks sure. that we've got. Sure. Now, you talked a little bit about the uh, mayor's advisory a commission on accessibility, mm -hmm. um, and that was going to be one of my questions. Okay. Now, is there any other role that they play? That, the, actually, there is. Now, this commission is made up of, of uh, city folks that, that are, uh, our ADA officer is a member of that committee from the city. Um, we have disabled. Now, ADA is? Uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, Americans, excuse me. Okay, uh, that's all right. Um, yeah, um, uh, the city has an ADA, a person who, who uh, uh, looks over the ADA laws and, mm -hmm. and ensures the city's in compliance. So she's on that committee. Um, we've got someone from the inspection department that's on that committee. They look at, they actually look at the plans, uh, the parking plans for buildings as they're built to be sure that they've yes. got adequate parking. So yes. we try to catch that early on, mm -hmm. make sure there's adequate, adequate handicap parking. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have several members uh, that are appointed by the council and the mayor of the, of the community that are disabled, and they give us input as to as to what they feel like we need to be doing. So, it's an important committee. Uh, we meet quarterly, and um, they critique our uh, our performance and help us. And so they they focus mainly on parking, um, but they also serve a role on the transit side mm -hmm. um, when we. When we have an Americans with Disabilities Act application for service and we turn it down based on what we feel like is a non-medical need, then that committee is sort of the reviewer to, okay. to oversee us and say, you made a mistake here, we think this person needs to be accepted or we agree with you, you, you know, this person needs to be denied. So the committee has several functions um, and uh, it's, a, it's a good committee, good group of people um, that take handicap parking and accessibility very seriously. Very seriously. It, it, it is an issue. It's a, it's a real issue. It should be. You know. Yeah. One of the things that, that is happening now, more and more people are, are aging and yes. we're, we're having better mobility. We're able to get out and about better. So the handicap parking use is, 
is increased. Has increased. And, and with that, the abuse has increased. So we've got to be diligent to make sure that those spaces are available for the folks that really have to have them to get out and be active. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad your, your department We're, is out there monitoring. We, we do our you know, best. We do because our best. I'm sure, you know, I, mean, I see, I, oftentimes I see, you know, areas that, um, mm, should not be, someone shouldn't be parked there. It's a, tr it's a tricky thing, and we have to go by the state law. The state law and says... you can't ask someone, can you? If you see someone parked there and they get out of the car and you say, well, now they don't look disabled, but you're not supposed to ask. We get a lot of those calls. I saw somebody parking there, and they look like they didn't have any problem getting yes. about. Well... We don't know if it's a mental disability, sure. if it's a if it's a heart related issue, a lung related issue, where the people, you know, they maybe can walk fine for 200 feet, but That's they can't right. walk further than right. that. Right. So we don't we don't know that. The law says if you've got the sticker, the placard, the tag, you're eligible. It doesn't say confront the uh, you know the the person and and ask them. That's right. And and, and maybe there's some ways that could be improved in the down the road. Down I think the road, that, I but think there that's are, not but left up to us to, that, to do right. that. Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> uh, my producer tells me I'm running out of time. Uh, okay. One more question I wanted to ask, and and, and that was in in reference to the rates. Are the rates uh, for parking in Huntsville? How do they compare to other cities? Huntsville's parking rates downtown are, are, are our monthly rates are fifty four dollars per month, um, and that uh, is 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 probably on the low side. That that generally gives us our operating costs back for for keeping up the garages and operating. Uh, Birmingham is a hundred dollars a, uh, a month in a lot of places. Atlanta gets up to two hundred dollars a month. Sure. You go to the large cities where parking is really at a premium, and and, and you could be looking at two hundred dollars a month. $400 a month. So our, our rates are fairly in line with what the market will, will bear in Huntsville and it does pay back our operating costs. So we try to, we try to keep them that way. Our own street parking is 50 cents an hour um, mm -hmm. th and that's a fairly reasonable rate. So we're, we're in line and, and, and our rates are, are fair. One other thing, uh, I hope I can get this in. I've been noticing we have some uh, areas where you can park if you have electric cars. Can you talk right. about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that's that's one of the mayor's initiatives right now is to is to incorporate uh, electric vehicle charging station in all of our public garages. Um, we've got one out in front of City Hall. Yes, I um, and basically that. it's tied to the meter rate. Um, it, it's two dollars for an hour. You park there, you can charge your car. Mm -hmm. That pays for the electricity and the parking. It gives you enough time to charge your car. We're looking at doing those in, in some of the larger public shopping areas, potentially, and also all of our city parking garages as electric vehicles uh, become more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Now, you say we have them in all the parking garages? That it, we're going to put them in all the parking okay. garages. Right now, the only one that, we're, that we have available is the one in front of City Hall on, uh, on Fountain Circle. Our, our goal and what we've asked for in our budget is to uh, have funding to place them in all the public garages right. so that uh, people can utilize those is, things. Um, is it being used quite a bit? Tom? It is it, it is being used. I, I'm, I frankly was a little surprised. It, it's uh, being used quite a bit and I think uh, that market is going to do nothing but, but grow. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, Tommy, our time has come to an end, and I want to thank you for taking time to share your goals and services of the city's transportation department. Huntsville has seen tremendous growth with your leadership. You've been here some 35 years and given your best uh, to the city, and we appreciate that. I appreciate that, Brenda. Let's give the viewers the telephone number and the address in case they need to talk with you. Okay. Our address is 500 Church Street, Huntsville, 35801. The phone number is 256-427-6800. They can go online, find the parking division, find the public transit division, find me, email me, call me. Um, let me know what you're thinking. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for joining us. Join us next time when we explore in-depth Inside Huntsville. I'm Brenda Martin. Thank you for joining us.